If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at cottageblogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello and welcome to another great episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer. As ever, completely delighted to be back with you again. And another VRMA conference is finished. This year, it was the first international event. And I was blown away. Over 1,700 attendees, 500 of them were brand new. They hadn't been to a VRMA event before and held at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. I have to say I'm not a huge fan of Las Vegas. I didn't much like the hotel. For for those of you who enjoy Vegas and that it, it was just a typical casino hotel. Lots of people playing slot machines at six o'clock in the morning with a beer and a cigarette in hand. That that was something I find it really difficult to cope with is cigarette smell <laughs> cigarette smoke at that time of the morning. In fact, cigarette smoke at any time of day. Yeah, c'est la vie. and the conference center was a long, long walk from the rooms, which is not, again, not a bad thing. I got a lot of steps on my Fitbit done and, you know, got my exercise, walked fast, met some fabulous people. It's always great to catch up with just some great folks. So it was it was an absolute pleasure to spend time with my friend Jessica Gillingham, Tyan Marsink, uh, Andy McNulty. David Angotti, Wes Melton, uh, Vanessa de Souza Large, Simon Lehman, Steve Milo, so many people. You know, it would probably take the whole podcast to actually uh, recount everybody's names. It was also a huge delight to spend my last evening in Vegas, which was Monday evening, and I had a midnight flight, wondering what ever was I going to do between the conference ending at five o'clock and heading to the airport. There wasn't much point in going to the party. I wouldn't have been there for much for, for very long. I got to spend that time with my great friend, Matt Landau, uh, and he was staying at Amy Fermani's place, about five minutes from the Strip. And uh, and I'll put a link in the show notes to the uh, to the interview that I did with Amy a couple of years ago. And, and so, so that was super cool to actually go to her house and experience it for myself. And yes, it was it was absolutely lovely. But Matt um, had a few people around there. Um, Conrad O'Connell was there. David and Wes were there. And a number of other people. Uh, um, Derek Eaton. I forgot Derek. <laughs> no, let, let me not forget Derek. Uh, such such a shining star in this industry. We had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. You'll hear me talking to Matt in a couple of weeks' time because recorded an interview where he has reviewed the season two of Sense of Place. And uh, and at the end of that, he, uh, he he mentions that the laugh that we had while round at, uh, at uh, Amy's place that evening. So that was really special. I got to enjoy some really good meals, went, went to a fantastic dinner hosted by Amy Highnote. And now, what I love about these events is just talking vacation rentals. That's all you do. You just talk VR, um, whether it's from a strategic level, which a lot of the conversation was, you know, where is this industry going in, in the future, um, to the very granular level. And, you know, I, I spent an hour or more talking with two property managers about just the, the little things that make a business really, really work and the little things that annoy and frustrate us. And sometimes it's just so nice to get together with people and appreciate that we all have exactly the same pain points. I, I just come away with so many different tips and, and solutions for these pain points. And it can be just a 10 or 15 minute conversation that resolves a problem that you've been ruminating on for months or even years. Just to give you one example, a number of years ago, I went to a Verma conference in San Diego and met up with a fellow property manager from here in Ontario. And we were in a discussion group with, with half a dozen people. I said discussion group, you know, it was, it was, we were just chatting around coffee after breakfast and we were talking about damage deposits. 
that time, a number of years ago, most property managers were still taking damage deposits, holding them and then sending them back. And I said, we've never done this because of the, you know, it was just so administratively unwieldy. unwieldy. This property manager gave me a, a recommendation that I followed and have never looked back on. And that is to self-insure for property damage and to take a, we call it an accidental damage protection plan. And I understand from my conversation with property managers this year that you can't use the word protection if you're self-insuring in the US. So you have to, you have to be quite creative in what you call these things. But we started out by making this voluntary and asking for $49 plus, uh, plus tax. And that would insure for up to around two, two and a half thousand dollars worth of accidental damage. Um, that really changed our business because it made it so much easier when there was damage to say, okay, we can, we've got the fund. We can pay this. We didn't have the backwards and forwardsing with the guests that we'd had on previous occasions. It, it was simply, you know, owner reported damage and, you know, provided that we had the photographs and that the guests had let us know that there was damage, we just paid up. This last year, we changed our policy and made that uh, voluntary payment compulsory. And we changed it from $49 per booking to $7 a night. We felt that was fairer to the people who had shorter stays and to those who were, who were coming for, for three or four weeks. And, and as I say, we made it compulsory. Given the 2,000 odd rentals we've done this year, we had one person who questioned the fact that they were being charged this $7 a night. Uh, I was blown away. I think at the, at the outset, I thought this was going to be a big issue. We were going to get a lot of pushback on it and we were going to have to explain it in, uh, in detail and we produced a leaflet for it. Nobody cares. Nobody cared. They just, you know, it's just $7 a night. They are paying in addition to the rental rate to cover them for any accidental damage. And, and in fact, I don't know the exact figure. We haven't, we haven't done our year end stuff yet, but it was minimal. There was minimal damage this year. And, uh, and it actually makes for quite a nice little backup fund. And, uh, and we use it for, for a number of things. Uh, and I'll probably do a separate podcast at some point in the future that just talks about general hacks, you know, what different companies do to make their lives easier, to make their guests' lives easier and to make their owners' lives easier. And uh, and we shall, we shall call that VR hacks or something, property manager hacks. So let's come back to that. So let's get away from this introduction. I'm talking far too much. I want to let my guests do a lot more of the talking today, and that's Amy Highnote from VRM Intel. Amy's always such a prominent figure at these uh, conference events. She has the real pulse on the industry, both from, from, from every level, really. She's worked in the property management business for, a, for many, many years, has her own properties, and she also spends a lot of time with with the, you know, the strategic players in the industry. She knows what's happening at HomeAway and at Airbnb and Booking.com because she talks to the people that are involved in a high level in these businesses. If you haven't yet gone to VRMIntel.com, please do. Please subscribe to the VRM Intel magazine. I'm going to be talking about it um, during the interview, but it, I just love the magazine. It's so full of interesting and insightful articles that will really help you with your business, whether you're a property manager or an independent owner. Just subscribe. It's free. It's delivered to your door and it's entirely free. So what's to stop you subscribing? Let's get on with it. Without further ado, let's go roll on over to my general conversation with Amy. We really didn't have a strategy for what we're going to discuss. We just had, this is more of a fireside chat I loved it. I hope you will too. And make sure you stick around right to the end as I've got an important announcement to share about VRSS 2019. So no fuss walk forwarding. Stay with us. Listen to Amy and we'll be announcing something right at the end of the interview. So I'm here with me today with my friend Amy Hynote. 
for those of you, I don't think there's anybody who doesn't know Amy Highnote. I don't know. I'm just going to say you're the best, Amy. That is absolutely not true. But I appreciate it. <laughs> no, it's a good I just. Birthday message. <laughs> I just. I mean, let's just talk about the magazine, the heart and soul that you put into that publication to bring to owners and managers the information that we really need to know without the fluff, without. I was going to say without the gloss, but it's not without the gloss because it, it's one of the nicest looking magazines I ever pick up. I was very proud to sit in an aeroplane and read VRM Intel. But you do so much else in this industry and and I'm very proud to know you. So really, ha- really happy to have you on here to talk about the VRMA International just passed. I mean, you've only just got back and it wasn't an easy, easy ride home was it it was not i I ran into a lot of um a lot of problems on my flight both getting there and coming back and then problems at mgm too so it was a it was a rough trip from a hospitality perspective oh gosh yes tell me tell me about that i you know i'm I'm not going to say too much about the mgm grand but mm, somebody dropped the ball well i was talking to someone um about that actually yesterday and you know they have to select those venues three years out and is the way so that the MGM was actually booked three years ago, and it's clearly gone downhill <laughs> since then. But also, they didn't expect a 1,900-person conference when they booked it. I mean, at the time, they thought they would have about 1,100 or 1,200 people, so it just didn't scale quite as well as I think they had hoped. I mean, I was obviously disappointed in the hotel. I think everyone who stayed there was just from a, the rooms and the service, you know, there alone. And then to, on my flights on both ways. Um, I had American going there and United coming back and had some really disappointing experiences and I, some st- weird stuff. I mean, completely unforced errors, you know, on the airlines. And I was just thinking on my side that we've got all these people from the other verticals in hospitality coming into our space now and saying this is how vacation rentals should operate. And I'm looking at the hotels and the airlines and I'm thinking, is that really what we want to be? That's a big hell no. <laughs> like, I mean, No, that's not who we want to be. So I just thought from my perspective, it was like having this this particular hotel experience and these particular airline experiences on the front and back end of this conference was kind of an eye opener of just saying, who are we going to be as an industry? What are we going to become? And striving to become more like hotels and more like airlines is not what this industry needs to be working towards, in my opinion. I would go along with that. Having got my sat, got sat down on my midnight flight to then sit on the tarmac for two hours because they couldn't get the toilets working and being told every 15 minutes. And of course, you settle back there. It's midnight and you're tired, eyes shut. And every 15 minutes is, hey, folks, a little bit more bad news. We still can't get these washrooms to work. And, and, and I think this has come out of people saying, you're not telling us what's going on. So part of me is thinking, oh, yeah, they're, they're trying to get it right, but they're not getting it right in the right way. <laughs> we eventually took off with one washroom operational and, and the pilot telling us, hey, folks, you know, you just got to sit tight and cross your legs. That's great service. <laughs> Can you imagine telling someone that when they come to stay with you? <laughs> oh, well, you know, we're not going to have a, a restroom or a bathroom for you and your family, but... There's, you know, outside, there's a really great tree that you can just relieve yourself out there. Don't worry about it. Just cross your legs. It'll be fine. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> well, to give them a little bit of slack here, the other option was we deplaned and at two o'clock in the morning and do what? Sit tight in the terminal building and wait for it to be fixed. So I think, you know, we all, they, they, they didn't serve any drinks whatsoever on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> all four hours we all sat there and it was all very very quiet wow. and I've never seen people move so fast when they got off an airplane in my experience they and it, to your point on trust every 20 or 30 minutes they, and I had to sit in the tarmac for two hours too they would tell us something and finally it was such a different thing every time that we're like this is none of this yeah. rings true <laughs> like I don't even know what's going on or what the real deal is but I don't believe a word you're saying And if you say that we're going to leave in 20 minutes, I don't believe that either. (laughs) You know, we're not. So it just, you know, the lack of trust. um, The downside of it is that people like me are deciding not to take trips Mm -hmm. because we don't want to fly. I'm determined that in 2019, I'm not accepting any 
any trip that that requires a flight. I'm just taking a year off. I can't handle it anymore. There have been too many of these. I think I've taken 24 flights in the last six months, and half of them have gone wrong, and oh. I just can't handle it. You will fly. You will fly to, from Pensacola to Orlando next November, won't you? I will not. I will drive. <laughs> you will drive. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I'll be down there. You yeah. can take me. Exactly. Well, true. Exactly. We'll drive no, together. Yeah. Okay. Um, Towards the end of this conversation, I'm going to explain what that's about. So yeah, the conference itself, though, I thought was um, it was really good. There was a lot going on there. There were a lot of different tracks. In fact, how many sessions do you think there were during every breakout? Uh, I think there were 10. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So 10 sessions. And I mean, I did one on the, on the Monday and it was the last session of the day before the, um, before the general session. And usually I'd expect that to be <laughs> not very well attended. People are, are jaded by the second day anyway. And then the last session of the afternoon, most people are you know, taking some time out. Well, as I went down the corridor to that session, you know, everywhere's packed. People were were definitely taking advantage of the education that was available. And I think some of it uh, was extremely good. Some was not so good. I actually, th- this is all third, you know, what I got from third parties because I, I only went to a, to a couple of, of, of sessions. What I got out of it most, Amy, was networking. And it was the first time that I'd spent some really quality time with other property managers and talked about things that were very relevant to my organization. And I was there to learn from other people who were down there in the weeds and not necessarily from those who were coming up from the at the top and talking big strategy. Well, and I think that your I mean, everyone's experience was different based on what they did during the show. Mm -hmm. So. Um, of all the 1,700 people, I'm sure everyone there had a different, you know, take on what happened. I actually did go to a lot of those um, sessions that were driven by OTAs and VCs and um, investors, um, some of the discussions about the trajectory of the industry as a whole. And I was telling Sarah Bradford and Tim Cafferty that I am jealous. I'm jealous of the people who got to go to the Love Languages session. I'm jealous. <laughs> of um, the people who really got to talk about and network with other property managers about about how to, you know, the operational and marketing sides of the business because the the higher end stuff was was weird. And I, I, I hesitate to say that because I keep on finding that coming out of my mouth. It's not the high end look. It's not the the top look because that's not that's not the right concern or the right word. It's more like there are two sets of people looking at this industry right now. There are the people who are looking at it from the funding opportunity, the investment opportunity, the flipping opportunity of the vacation rental space. And they're looking at a $150 billion industry and they're looking at venture capital funding, private equity funding. I mean, all these conversations are happening on one side. And then there's the other way of looking at our industry and that's the people who actually run our industry. This is host, homeowners, property managers, and guests. And there's a whole real space that's happening there. And this other side of it, it there's a lot of noise in that space right now. And I, I think more than anything, there are a lot of opinions there. There's not a lot of facts there. And so having to dissect all of the information that's coming at you in that global way of looking at our space and trying to put that into some type of a rational you know, thought pattern is really difficult for me, right? Now. Yet it needs people like you to do that because, you know, I, I, I talked to one couple there and they had one property of their own and they were managing a property on behalf of somebody else. They were there with, with just two properties. And, and I'm going to be talking to them in the next couple of weeks, just finding out what it was that they got out of it because some of that high level stuff, um, particularly in the general sessions was, you know, I, I just want to find out what they thought about it and how they were able to translate it into anything that might be impactful for their business. Now, these this this couple are the bigger property managers of the future. And as I was walking around there talking to a number of people with much smaller property management companies who were there for the very first time, you think of 500 new property managers or, or, or people that, that went to the new attendee uh, sessions. 
I would imagine many, many of those were small. They, they were probably majorly confused with some of the dis- a, some of the higher level discussion that was taking place in the. That's gen- a shocking number of new attendees. I didn't realize that. Yeah, a couple of people came up and said that they'd heard me talking about VRMA on the podcast, and that's why they that's why they signed up. And, <laughs> and I thought, oh God, that's a responsibility. <laughs> Again, talking about the high level. I think what we mean when we say the high level, the high level conversations is it's just more of the people looking at the industry as a whole, but it certainly is not meant to imply at all anymore that it's the more educated view of our industry or the more enlightened view of our industry. How the high level view of our industry is when we refer to it is that it's, that's not what I'm referring to at all because I don't think it's true anymore. And I, I think that the high level view of our industry doesn't fully understand the industry. <laughs> Does that make sense? And I know I'm kind of a snob about this because I worked for a property management for a while too. And it's like property management company. And if you haven't cleaned a toilet or taken a reservation, I, you know, I, I realize that, that I kind of maybe don't have as much appreciation, <laughs> you know, for the people who haven't actually done the job, but as I should, but at the same time, there are a lot of viewpoints coming into our space, a lot of perspectives, a lot of opinions coming in from other industries and other verticals. And they're looking at certain things that, that they would like to see in terms of standardization and um, um, best practices, rating systems, hotel conversions. There are a lot of discussions happening there that are agenda driven. For example, the OTAs want standardization. They want rating systems and they want Um, the ability to list vacation rentals in a standardized way right up against hotels so that there's not a differentiation there because that helps their ability to display them to guests. So they want standardized cancellation policies. They want the same type of refund policies. They want the same types of descriptions. And those things don't work in our space. And they also want less in communication between the provider, between the homeowner, the manager, and the guest. In our space, some of those things simply don't work. And my favorite thing was that we were, um, I was at the Libres conference, and Sean Stewart, who used to be at Airbnb, um, he was speaking, and he doesn't work there anymore. He's at Google now. He was talking about instant booking and how his prediction three years ago was that everyone would move to instant booking. But he said what he had learned is that in the luxury market in particular, that some communication needed to happen between the guest and the homeowner. Because of that communication, that there was no, that there were certain situations that instant booking would never happen in our industry, and shouldn't that it wasn't the best experience for the guest. And I thought that was kind of interesting that people are actually learning that along the way. I agree with that. I mean, I I know that you know in our market, it's really tough. You know, in the in a very rural market, where we're encouraging people to drive 15 miles down a dirt track to a a tiny little cottage that's on a septic system with water that comes from a lake. And we're being told we can't communicate directly with the guests who are trying to book this. You know, that there are other markets that that I don't believe it works in. I completely agree. And all of this stuff that's happening on what we're calling the high level view of our industry, it's opinion. You know what I'm saying? There's There's no proven model here. This is all opinion. No one has gotten it right in our space right now, which is what makes it so fun excuse me, none of these global companies have gotten it right yet. So it's like, I think it's fascinating, you know, where we are in this wild, wild west part of the industry. But I also think that it's really important to be very discriminating when we hear people speak Mm -hmm. in that not just because someone's saying it on stage or someone's writing it in a post doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. And I, I think that's, That's a difference that we have in our space that requires a little bit, you know, more diligence on our part in this industry uh, than it does maybe in some other spaces. And I think this is why I had the concern about these 500 new attendees who would be sitting in those general in those halls for those general sessions, looking at these people on the stage and 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 taking what they were saying as gospel. Well, uh, just an example, and one of the ones that I sat in, it was the VC funding, and they had venture capitalists on stage, and one was um, from Thayer, and he has a, he, two of his investments are Booking Pal and Sonder, so he spent a large part of the session of his 
of his part of it talking about how great Sonder was and how fantastic Booking Palace model was. And to be fair, they're both rising companies, and I'm not saying anything negative about either one, but they both have had challenges, there's no doubt, and everyone who knows the space knows it. If you didn't know a little bit deeper, you know, have a little bit deeper knowledge on either one of those companies, you would believe that those were the two up-and-coming companies in our industry. Mm -hmm. And he's just trying to promote the companies that he's invested in. And that's his right to do, (laughs) you know? I mean, it's not that I, I feel like he should be censored, but I feel like some of that should be disclosed, you know, that so that people do understand that if someone is invested, for instance, in a company that's providing a rating system to the industry and they're on stage promoting a rating system for the industry, that we know that. I've always thought that for for any new attendees at these events, I mean, um, Amy, we're getting old and jaded. Well, I'm getting old and jaded. (laughs) You're just jaded. (laughs) No, I'm just jaded. (laughs) I I think there should be a, you know, a a little leaflet that goes out that says, you know, go go into these things open-minded not saying don't trust but don't absolutely accept what's coming at you from them i remember going to my first verma conference and and i was in such awe of the people that were standing on the stage now oh my god these people are amazing they are they're up in front of all these of all of all these attendees what they're saying must be true. I completely agree with you. I remember how starstruck I was <laughs> about so many of the people speaking at these conferences. And I, but I do think, and most of the people I think in, in our industry that have been around, been in it for over two years, probably are aware <laughs> that there's a lot of noise coming in that's not, that may not be applicable to our own businesses. But my fear, my greatest fear of this conference is that some of the people, depending on what tracks they went to, walked away thinking that, oh, well, the OTAs already have all the bookings, so I have to work with them, and these big companies are coming, so I'm going to be out of business in two or three years anyway, so I need to make A, B, and C decisions. That's not what's happening. <laughs> you know, that's not what's happening at all. Some of the numbers that were thrown out are not accurate at all and on stage. Um, there are not 70% of U.S. bookings being done on OTAs. That's not what's happening. The new companies, the the up and up and coming multi destination management companies, still only represent less than ten percent of the whole market, so they're not taking over the whole industry. We still are not moving towards the standardization process. None of that has actually happened. There are people who have ideas of it, but there nothing has actually gone forward with that. Airbnb doesn't have a loyalty program. Nobody's going to take over that market. I mean, they put theirs back to bed. And they're trying to rework it. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things that were said that are ideas. Well, we all have a lot of ideas. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm like none of those things are actually happening yet. Right now, we still have a lot of guests who want to stay in vacation homes. There are a lot of families that would rather stay in a home than a hotel. And most of them would rather book as close to the homeowner as they can. Um, whether it's a boutique property manager or uh, an individual homeowner, they want that experience of staying in someone's home with the personalities that go along with it and and to a place that they can feel like they're at home did you did you know that matt was going to appear on stage at the end of day two no no i had no idea and when he showed up i was um because he told me he wasn't coming yeah so i mean first of all i see matt to me when i saw him which was on the i guess the second night he jumped into the booking.com dinner he ran in and ran out, and I chased him out, so much so that Pierre from Transparent called me a groupie. <laughs> he said, you're a Matt Lando groupie, and I was like, right now I am. Because I think seeing his face at that particular mm-hmm. show was incredibly refreshing to me. Well, that's that's why um, I brought it up, because coming, um, although I, I enjoyed that panel immediately before he, he came on, and we'll, we'll go on and talk about um, Leslie from Batch Care in a minute, because that was refreshing too. You know, coming sort of at the end of of that second day, and then the um, the Sizzler reel for Sense of Place, just right. showing that, which was showing passionate owners and passionate managers, and that that's what Sense of Place is about. It was such a contrast to where we'd been in that earlier parts of the of the previous two days, and. I don't know who, you know, whether that was really thought about when somebody said, well, let's put this Sizzler in there and let's put Matt Lando on stage for two minutes, which is what he had. I thought that was brilliant. And it's for many people in the room, I think it sort of 
brought them back to what is our reality? That's a really good word, actually, <laughs> reality in our space right now. And I think that what I am going to do in my endeavors going forward is really focus on what's real and what's true mm -hmm. and maybe not give as much of a platform for things that I don't believe that are accurate going forward. I think I've done that in the past. I think I've given a lot of um, time and voice to, to some ideas that I'm not sure that I should have done in hindsight. And I think that it's really important to go forward and really examine the reality of this industry and try to focus on what makes a successful property management company, mm -hmm. what makes a successful homeowner, and what makes a successful guest experience, and, and really focus on that piece of it. I mean, I still want to talk about, you know, the, the other global pieces of what's going on, but in a much more factual way. Yeah, I used to talk about it as getting down into the weeds. Um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But I think yeah. it's more getting down into the flowers. I like it. I like it. Because I, like I try and lift myself out of the flower bed, shall we say, and and get up into the sky and look down and see what's, you know, what is it that's going on, particularly in my own business. But really getting down there operationally and, and being in there understanding what guests want, um, what owners are prepared to give and how we can educate owners into, into the way of the vacation rental world. That that's where I want to be for sure. I completely agree. And what's going on in the Lake country and what's going on in the Gulf coast are two totally, totally mm -hmm. different things. And what's going on in outer banks and what's going on in India and China and vacation rentals are very <laughs> different things. So to sit here and focus on what's going on in emerging markets, when you've got a drive to market of a certain, you know, group of guests that are likely to come stay with you, that, you know, it's a very different proposition. And I think this is bringing going back to Leslie, what my time with her really, you know, reminded me of is that, you know, she knows who her guests are. Can, can you just, and, uh, can you just backtrack and tell us who, yeah. who Leslie is? So, Leslie is the founder and CEO of Batch Care in New Zealand. And if you go on her site, you'll just have like property envy <laughs> because they're just, New Zealand is, I mean, they're just beautiful homes. But um, she said something, and I'd been hearing about her for about a year now that I needed to get together with her. And so she was on the radar, but she was on stage with some pretty, what's the word? I'm waiting Vocal for it. <laughs> guys, like very strong men. And she held her own and I thought beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, she said something that she was being asked about uh, her direct bookings versus booking on her presence on OTAs. And she said that 70% of her bookings are direct and that she only uses the OTAs strategically. She went on to say that she uses them. She's not going to use them for a weekend or a festival week that she knows she could book 10 times over. So there would be no reason to list a property on an OTA for a week that she knows that she will get a direct booking during that time, that that's a dumb use of the OTAs. She also went on to say the way that she looks at OTAs versus direct booking and her marketing efforts is that she's going to have to pay for the booking anyway. So whether she pays the OTA or whether she pays Google or whether she pays a direct marketing effort through email or print or something else, that she's paying. There's a marketing cost for getting a booking. So that's not what trips her up about OTAs. What bothers her about getting a booking from the OTAs is that she wants her business is to create an end-to-end -end experience for the guest. So she wants to be able to control the message to the guest from the very beginning control the whole sales process, set their expectations correctly, communicate with them pre-stay in the way that she wants to, and you know, basically sets the stage for a beautiful vacation experience and then have that relationship as the guest arrives and then continues into a repeat stay so that 30% of her stays are now repeat. And the, the whole idea of the end-to-end -end experience for the guest I thought was incredible because she's not looking at, oh, we don't want to use OTAs because we have to pay for them. She's like, no, we don't want to use OTAs because it's not the best experience. And I thought the way that she vocalized that, I just thought it was incredibly, or the way she articulated it was meaningful to me. 
But it was interesting the comment that came out because um, Graham Donahue from Sykes Cottages was on there. And the comment was, was that because both um, Graham and Leslie were talking about the amount of direct bookings they took. And the comment was, well, you're both on Ireland. Therefore, that that was the reason. What I think is fascinating is that they are both on places where they have international travel. Yeah. To be fair, booking.com should be their number one source of revenue Mm -hmm. if you were playing in that field. But they both, you and I have talked about our international travel, that when you're going to another country, you typically want to stay with, a you want to book through a property manager because you need some communication there and you don't have that trust level of going through an OTA when you don't know the space. If you know the area... Like, if I'm going to Atlanta, I know Atlanta. You know what I mean? I can book anything in Atlanta and feel comfortable. If I'm going to New Zealand, I want to know that there's somebody there, you know, that's going to hold my hand if I'm going to stay in a house in the country. They've exploited that, and they both do a really, really good job at it. So so do you think because of that, that that's, that's because that, that that's the reason they have such a high proportion of direct bookings? No, no, I think it's that, and I think it's also that they were not willing to hand over the keys to their entire business to the OTAs. So they made a conscious effort, and both of them, in talking to both of them, they both indicated that they felt like people that were handing it over like that, especially in the U.S., were just being lazy, that it was lazy marketing, that it was easier to just go and sign up all your properties onto an OTA and not try to strategically think through what weeks needed to be there and what weeks didn't and which properties needed to be on which channels when, you know, that that takes effort and that we are spending so much time um, focusing on, you know, busy, you know, we're busy doing so many other things that we're not taking the time to strategically manage OTAs and to strategically make, um, set a goal of increasing the amount of direct bookings and repeat bookings that we have. I think that we're so busy doing other things. We don't have dedicated marketing efforts as much as some companies do. Like, for instance, Leslie and um, Graham, they both have marketing departments, you Mm -hmm. know, who are focused on this. The person who is actually dealing with monthly owner statements or working with housekeeping and maintenance companies, if that person's job is also to merchandise on the OTAs, that's a huge challenge, you know, to have people doing different jobs like that. We haven't siloed that out well. Yeah, it's 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 interesting as as a property manager, I know it's it's easy to sort of to, to throw up your hands and say, you know, I can't do this and what what's the point? The OTAs are out there, they're just they're just gonna market my properties and that's fine. Do you take a look and I would suggest people go and have take a look at sykescottages.co.uk. Uh, there the top, the content on there is 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 massive. There's a lot of content on there for every area with things to do. You can't find that on the OTAs. You can't say, well, I'm going to, if somebody's coming up here to, to one of our little areas, you're not going to go to HomeAway and, f- and find any information on what to do in Muskoka or what to do in the quarters. But the smaller agencies can do that. They can, they can deliver all that content and then they will be found. And it's, it's, it's all, again, it's all too easy to say, I can't rank for the keywords that the OTAs are ranking for. Well, you don't have to. No. You rank for what you people are looking not. for. I mean, we're doing it with ice fishing in the co-authors. You're not looking to bid up against HomeAway for vacation rentals, for the, for the phrase vacation rental. However, lakefront cabin, <laughs> fireplace, hot tub, you know, like you said, with ice fishing, I mean, that kind of stuff starts to resonate. We all type in more than we used to on Google. You know, whenever you're searching for something that you want to find out more about, I think we all do more than just type in one or two words like we used to. Because there are so many results out there right now. If you don't tell Google a little bit more about what you're searching for, it takes a long time to find what you want to find. If I'm looking for a condo in Gulf Shores versus a a home in Gulf Shores, and I really want a hot tub, then, you know, those are the things that I type in now. Yes, you can compete in AdWords on that. That's not that expensive to do. And on top of that, you can create a landing page on your site for Gulf Shores condos with hot tubs. That's certainly doable. And those things are not hard. It doesn't take that long to do that research. I think what we're doing is we're creating an elephant. You know what I mean? When we look at all the things that we have to do in marketing, 
it seems so overwhelming and we're not just narrowing it down to a this and this and the, you know, like a checklist, like mm-hmm. this doesn't, it's like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? I think that we're all looking at everything in our businesses right now. Like it's just this mammoth overwhelming set of tasks. And when you break them out individually, they're really not, you know, what would be fun to do is if somebody who's listening, who's a marketing minded person is to do a six month marketing workshop where once a week there's a class and a task like a 15 minute class and a 30 minute task. And then over the course of six months, the whole thing would be done. Absolutely. Cause sometimes it's just a matter of thinking a little bit laterally. We're so focused on, as I said, ranking for these keywords that we don't think wider than that and think, you know, there's other things we can do and something as simple as, I don't know, getting involved locally. And this comes back to what Matt talks about when he's talking about limited edition and, and all these hosts and managers who are who are killing it because they get involved locally they get a name they they're getting the word out on their location and what there is to do and people are finding them not through googling vacation rentals in Hilton Head they they are googling a question about something else about maybe about somewhere of where to go for breakfast you know up up comes that information and they're finding it on a property manager's website. It's, I totally agree with you. Um, you know, knowing, we already know that trust is the number one factor. Amy, what did you enjoy most? Honestly, I enjoyed meeting Leslie at VegCare a whole lot. She was incredibly inspiring, and um, I invited her to the Women's Summit. So <laughs> we'll all be able to get to see her again. Um, I enjoyed the networking a whole lot. Um, it was great to see, you know, a lot of the people that we don't get to see in person very often and being able to have those face to face conversations was incredible. I enjoyed the operational sessions that I went to, um, immensely. And I think I really enjoyed, um, getting to see that global view of the industry and really getting the, the full understanding that, that there are a lot of opinions, a lot of different perspectives that may not be accurate, true, or viable. Mm -hmm. It's just really that kind of understanding, even though it was difficult at the time. I'm really glad that I have it. My experience of of Verma only goes back to around about 2006. So I'm a sort of relatively, relative baby at those. But there was still, you know, that, that was a time when there was only 500 or so, maybe 400 people there. So there has to be some, you know, sea change in how it's all presented because of the diversity now of, of the attendees. You know, as I said, from, from, the, from the, the couple who have two properties all the way up to the, the mega companies. Well, I completely agree. And I do want to say that I think that we need those sessions that are there. I, I'm glad that the, the venture capitalists are there. I'm glad the private equity companies are there. I'm glad we're having the conversations because we do need funding in this industry, largely in tech. Like the, if, if the funding comes in and when it goes to technology companies and to innovation and, and technology, then that helps everybody. So I, I'm glad that's happening. That focus right side of our industry is starting to be addressed. And I think it's important, but it's really also important to segment whether you're going for that type of information or going for information that actually grows your business on, you know, operationally and in, in, mm-hmm. in your market and finance areas. And if you're going there for education there, then I would leave that side of the conference alone. Yeah. It's just not necessary. Everything you can read about on Skift or on my site or, you know, Focus Wire, you know, all of it's there. It's not necessary to, to spend the time in those sessions hearing all of that debate. One of the things John Banzak from Turnkey said in that panel, he, they were asking him about standardization and ratings. And he said, well, first you have to look at this alternative accommodation space is not one industry. <laughs> you know, it is when you look at when people are trying to size it for other purposes, but underneath accommodation, alternative accommodations, there's shared housing, there's urban short-term rentals, there's vacation rentals. And under vacation rentals, there are cottages and cabins and condos and beach houses. And, you know, there are a lot of different types of properties and types of owner and types of guests underneath this. So I think really knowing who we are, 
you know, where we fall into the ecosystem in our local market and who our guests are, that kind of space of it. I think the world becomes a lot more manageable really quickly. So for instance, if you are a beach house on Bald Hat Island and your market is largely drive to within about an eight hour drive to radius, you only have to be number one there. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be number one in China. You don't have to be number one in California. You know, you don't have to, your brand doesn't have to be recognizable in Montana. So it's like, so that's where their guests are coming from. The house is, um, you know, keeping that quality there and talking to the the kind of guests that they get in a way that resonates with that guest is, you know, that's totally manageable. Looking at it from that, quote, high level perspective, it becomes, it feels a lot less manageable. I think in knowing why you're going to a show, you know, and being able to interact with the people who are like-minded in those same sessions, I think it probably makes it a lot more manageable. Yeah, absolutely. I remember I I, I talked to um, an owner on a podcast not so long ago, and we were talking about her market and, you know, how it was persona driven. And she had really defined her market so closely that we ended up, she ended up with, with um, senior ladies from Ohio who loved quilt making. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, how great is that though? Uh, but that, that was for a property and she was, she was um, filling it with, senior quilt makers from Ohio and that that worked and that's how she was that, that's where she was marketing this was the audience that she was marketing to and that was working as you say you don't need to be advertising in China for that I mean typically you know you're not going to take more than 100 reservations in a year yeah. likely it's more like 50 mm -hmm. so out of, let's say it's 50 reservations in a year on a good year <laughs> you know and 10 percent come back that's 45 new ones you have to get mm -hmm. And the next year, it's only 40 <laughs> you have to get. And I mean, I know there's a roll off after two or three years, but you know, it's, it's very manageable when you think, I only need 50 reservations. So where am I going to get 50 reservations for this property? And if it's senior quilt makers in Ohio, I mean, there are probably what am I get? I don't know, 100,000 from senior quilt makers in Ohio? There was a big market. <laughs> You know, I don't know, but you know what I'm saying. It's yeah, like, I, don't I, mean, like, I was just you're using... reaching that spot, and that's yeah. that becomes way manageable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it and and that's just that's just a, a such a better way of seeing it. So, talking about conferences, let's talk about VRWS, the Vacation Rental Women's Summit. What's going to be different at that summit? Well, I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> so, your love language session was raved about like everyone was talking about how great it was and so i'm hoping that you will do that one well i we That's would uh, yeah I, I i think i'd sent you an email about that saying that yeah i really want to do that i want to get i don't know whether andy's gonna come but i'd like to get tyan on board and we'll we'll deliver that one because i was blown away with how well that was taken well i think it makes total sense and i hope that you'll write an article about it for our readers as well for all of us who do know the five languages, <laughs> it's really true that we all have ways that make us feel valued. So if I'm somebody who wants an act of service, then giving me a discount isn't going to make me feel valued. Yeah. So and I think that's fascinating. And I think it's really easy to identify. And again, in a manageable audience, that's um, it becomes much easier to do, too. And I, I just think it's fascinating. I'm so excited about it. And congratulations on that. Um, oh, well, you know, kudos yeah. goes to Tyann Marsink, who came up with the with the concept. She came up with the idea. And then for uh, it, it, it was great to have the three of us because Andy, Andy McNulty from Touch Day. I mean, he is the we called him the serial guest because he doesn't have his own property, but he stays at countless properties and has done for years and years and years. And of course, Andy's been in the business for I don't know as long as I can remember. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, he, he, yeah. he was was working for Gucci and he's worked for Victoria Beckham but he's still as 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 a um as a CFO and he's still you know his his passion is still in this industry um so he came with the guest perspective and then um Tyann with her perspective as an independent owner of you know she has half a dozen properties but is an independent owner and not a manager and then myself with the management experience it just seemed that we were able to tie in the three uh, the three perspectives um, and just wrap it up with this love language com concept. 
Well, I really like it, and yeah. I um I think it's in, in innovative and creative and, and fun. <laughs> oh yeah, we had fun doing it, and I'm so glad as it was four o'clock on uh, three o'clock on on the Monday, <laughs> the second day. So what 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 else can people? And it does not have to be just women, right? No, no, exactly. No, men are welcome to come, and people talk about it, and no, they don't have to wear a dress to come. I've been getting a lot of feedback on that. There's a lot of political stuff around women right now and that it's the year of the woman. And I'm not taking away from that because, I mean, I'm a supporter of of women's rights, but that's not really what this conference is about. <laughs> this conference is much more of a, a networking um, group and also just addressing some of the discussions that we have that are not quite as widely embraced with a male-dominated conference. So it's not that we're trying to make a political statement here. So, yes, if men would, I mean, for any men who would like to come, you're more than welcome. February 19th and 20th in New Orleans. Um, it's at the Ritz-Carlton. we got an amazing rate there. However, those rooms are going fast. So if you haven't booked your room at the Ritz-Carlton, you should probably do that sooner than later. We have Lady Carnarvon from Downton Abbey, well, Highclere Castle, which is the real Downton Abbey. She's speaking. Um, we have Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love and Big Magic. I'm really excited about that. She's coming too. Tina Wayan, who's the Chief Product Officer at HomeAway will be there. And Mary Lynn Clark, who's the president of Wyndham Vacation Rentals, will also be there as keynotes. It looks like we're going to have some speakers from Airbnb and Booking.com too, but I don't have those confirmed. But as far as the sessions go, they're largely about things like conflict management, um, delegating, working with family, extreme weather patterns, how that's affecting our industry. So, but and then some, a lot of marketing workshops, but we're doing a lot of roundtables and peer groups. So there are a lot of discussions with other people that are in the industry about certain topics. You know, it's really designed to connect more than anything. And I'm, I couldn't be more excited about it. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, I want to talk about another conference. Um, yes. And, and that is the Vacation Rental Success Summit, which, you know, my listeners have been asking me for forever, ever since May, when is the next one? Because they wanted to plan for it. And I want to announce now that we will be doing a summit, a conference. It will be in November of 2019. It will be in Orlando. And it is a partnership this year between, and I'm so excited about this, Amy. We do. We <laughs> it's, do. A par- it's a partnership between VRSS and Amy's own VRM Intel. So for those of you who've been to VRM Intel conferences, which I, th- I think, well, we primarily are, are focused on um, managers. You know, those managers that, you know, very independent managers who, who are singing our tune. So we're going to merge these two events and create one where independent managers can come along with independent hosts and owners and get together and explore topics that are common to all of us uh, and also to perhaps to understand each other a little better. I completely agree. And I think that um, one of the, the benefits for the property, the larger property managers that come to the VRM Intel events is that this group that um, that you bring together is so inspiring and creative and fun and passionate about what we do. And I think some of these managers that have been in business for a, a long time have lost some of that. And so I just wanted to, I think it would be so amazing for the people who normally come to mind to sit down and be around the people that come to the Vacation Rental Success Summit and really, you know, start to to get, you know, rejuvenated and more passionate about, you know, what we do in the industry. And I also think that they provide a lot of best practices and understanding of profitability and how to create a successful, sustainable business, working in the community, working on regulations, you know, some of the more professionalized sides of the business. I think that would be interesting for the for the smaller managers and the homeowners as well. I think it's going to be a good group. I, I think it's going to be amazing. I, I really do. Uh, so And also, you put on a better show than I do. So <laughs> it will have all of the the fun things that Heather does where everyone feels wined and dined and the quality is always so high. <laughs> and I'm really excited about that. And I think Orlando is going to be great for us, especially in November when the weather's good, kids are still in school, so it's easy to to enjoy it. 
Yeah, absolutely. So so we're a year away yet. We haven't pinned down the exact date or the venue, but I just wanted to get it out there to to allay the fears that, or, or the questions that some people have had that, that we weren't going to do another one. I mean, I, I had this idea that, you know, we, you talk about panels, what great panels we could have with independent owners sitting alongside uh, property managers. 100% agree. Yeah. 100. It needs to happen. Yeah. And the fun thing about this is this is really, this is all about reality. This is really what's going on in the industry. I think what's going to be so fun about this group is that whether these are everything that we're going to be talking about is, is reality based and, and focused on actually growing the business in a manageable way. And so taking out some of this other noise that's just unnecessary at mm-hmm. this point is, I think, will be refreshing, especially in light of some of these other growing conferences that are getting, you know, that are making things a little bit more difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Amy, as, as, as ever, your take on everything is refreshing. It's right on topic. And, and you, you bring so much to, to everybody in the industry, but not least of of it is uh, those of us who are down in the flowers. So thank you. Well, I feel the exact same way about you. (laughs) Any (laughs) chance to spend with you is a good one for me. (laughs) Well, a huge thank you to Amy Highnote for joining me for that and, and for giving us her very honest and unfiltered uh, opinion. A huge thank you for to So a huge thank you for to <laughs> So a huge thank you to Amy Highnote for joining me with her review of the Vacation Rental Managers Association Conf- International Conference from Las Vegas. If you go over to VRM Intel Dot com, you can check out her post on on the conference as well, which um, which breaks it down into a little bit of a more logical order. What we've just had here is a real sort of conversational fireside chat, which I love when I'm talking to Amy because we can really explore some depths in in our industry. And you know, the message I got from from what we were talking about is that property managers and owners we need to discriminate when we're looking at what we read, what we hear, what we listen to when we're going to conferences and listening to the people from the stage, just because they are up there talking to us, just because they're writing articles in magazines and on Skift and on Tino's and all those travel forums, that we're not taking what they say as gospel. It is, as Amy says, quite often opinion. And and if it is being given to us, wrapped up as fact, then we need to do some research and make sure that what we are hearing is actually what is happening. So that was that was a great review of the conference. And of course, looking forward to Vacation Rental Women's Summit in February of next year. And of course, our super announcement that we are partnering up with VRM Intel to produce what we think will be the best independent conference on the planet for November of 2019 in Orlando, Florida. Who doesn't like Orlando in November when the sun is shining and and the kids are at school? Prepared, get ready to come to Orlando and spend some time with us. We're going to have an amazing lineup for you. We're going to try to make it different from the other conferences that are out there. And of course, when it's when you're with independence, of course, it's going to be different anyway. So that's it for another week. And I'll look forward to being with you again next time. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over. But don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business. 